In this lesson, we're going to colorize the chrome around the parking lights. Here are the parking lights. If you recall, we colorized the parking light. But we haven't done anything to the chrome. We're going to do different parts of the chrome separately and add them together. I already made the path. I've done path things before. Some of them I'll do again, but maybe in different lessons. But I do have a path, screen left, P light structure. Way too long a title in my book, but that's what I did. There's Christopher, our great photographer, who's car we've been using in all these lessons. I'm going to turn off the eyeball there. We've got this. Now there's some other tricks and other things you can do in Photoshop, so I wanted to do that here. One thing is to, we were going down here to get the marching ants. You can also hold the command key or the control key on the PC. Now if you click on the thumbnail, look at the little hand with the little dotted line. Click on the thumbnail and you'll see the path come up. So that's a quick, another, uh, that's like a shortcut to get the path. We already have the left light. So what I'm going to do is go to a selection tool so that I can move this path over to the left. Now that doesn't fit at all, does it? But we haven't used a cool tool in Select, Transform Selection. So I'm going to tilt it to the right. It won't be totally perfect, but I'll show you another trick. It's close to it. It's not bad. Um, I'm going to hit the check mark for a moment so I can go to my Zoom tool and zoom in a little closer. Get the hand tool and move over here. Now it's not too bad, but I'm going to go back to my transform selection. This is one I like to make my own keyboard shortcut because it doesn't have one. Now remember, this is different than free transform or transform path. This is transforming the marching ants only. So if you hold the command key, control key on the PC, just pull, you can pull the bounding box edges independently. Now look, that doesn't look right. See, you can see a lot of grass there. So I want to pull that in a little bit. So I'm going to have to do a little hand painting with the quick mask, it looks like, because I'd rather, let I, the less hand painting, in my opinion, the better. They're moving this over here. That's not so bad. So I'm just going to say, okay, fine, done with that, and go into Quick Mask with our keyboard shortcut. This is the Quick Mask, but the Q key gives me that. And I'm going to fix some of this. I'm going to get a brush. I already have a hard edge brush. Do I have white or black? I have black on, on the in my uh, foreground chip. So. First, I'm going to paint, because uh, I, I don't want the grass to get colored. And then I'm going to hit the X key to get the white. And now, let's see if I did too much there. I can go back and forth. You're all going to be non-destructive experts. A little bit of this here. And there we have it. Let's go out of there and there's a beautiful uh, shape and usually when I have you save an alpha channel I was going select save selection this time we're going to do a shortcut this little icon down here the square with the hole in it see it's all over the place wherever it is it means it's going to make a channel of some sort alpha one but we want to make sure it says R P light, P light, S for structure. <laughs> and I'm going to go back up to my RGB to see everything. Now I want both of them. I'm going to double click the hand tool so I can see the whole thing. Now I can, again, this time, not only am I going to click on here holding down 
the command key, but I'm going to hold the shift key as well because that's add to selection. Click. Now I've got both of them. Rather than saving the alpha channel, I'm just going to get an adjustment layer which comes up and when there's marching ants, it automatically makes the layer mask have a mask in the shape of the, of the marching ants. So I'm going to use our old friend Hue, and then I'm going to hit Colorize. Now, the light bulbs, we can't see the light bulbs anymore. Now you could maybe move around the adjustment layers and get it to work. I would say about 10% of the time that will work. But often, even if it isn't above it, above something, it will impact the color of something that has an, a, a colorization or adjustment layer. So instead, to be on the safe side, this is editing a layer mask is what I call this. There's what the layer mask looks like. Let's go back to our uh, RGB, our composite. There we go. And then I'm going to get the lights, parking lights, and I want the marching ants for that. So I'm going to hold my command key and click on the thumbnail. Again, I have that hand with those dots. Yay. Click on the thumbnail, and I'm going to Fill that black conceals, white reveals. I'm on the structure layer. I should name this hue light structure. Light struck. I'll put that. And I'm going to fill it, if you haven't guessed by now, with... Oh, it's not letting me. Oh, that's because I'm not on the mask. Oops. Image. Oops. Image, image, fill, black is chosen, and now those beautiful lights are there. Terrific. And now I'm still on here. I need to get back onto the adjustment itself, which is hue, saturation, and colorize. I don't need the marching ants. Command D or Control D. And now I want the chrome around these structures to be See, this matches the car, but that's just a freaky coincidence. I'm going to colorize and start moving the color into the pink realm. So now we've got this, rain, this car that's starting to look like a rainbow car. We've got a lot more to do, and we'll do it in subsequent lessons. So there you have it.